Okay, welcome back guys. Today we're going to go over how to make a simple Unity 2D shooter game. We're going to go over things such as player of movement, projectile, and enemy AI, simple enemy AI. There's a lot more things that we can build upon this project, but this is a good bare bones project. So uh, first things first, timestamps are in the description and the pinned comment, and project files are also in the description and pinned comment. So let's begin. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Unity, go to New, uh, let's make a new project, we'll call it Basic Shooter, Shooter Tutorial, and make sure to toggle to the Hit Create Project, it's going to take some time to load up the project. Now that we have this, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on Assets folder over here, we're going to hit Create. And we're going to create three folders. The first one is going to be called Images. Do it again. Next one is going to be called Scripts. The last one is going to be called Prefabs. And we do this for organization's sake. Okay, so next we're going to go to OpenGameArt.org to get free game art, or alternatively, you could add in any game art that you have yourself. I have the pre-selected one that I put over here. You could. I'll have a link for this in the description as well as the top comment. So we're just going to download this guy, right? I already have it downloaded, so. Okay, so after you download it, all you have to do is go to the folder that it's at, select it, drag and drop it under the images folder. Now that we have the image in our folder, we can simply just drag and drop it to the scene, as you see here, go to inspector, and go to position, set all of this to zero, it will be zero to zero. Alright, so it's time to make our first script. Left click on scripts, right click, create C sharp script. We're just gonna call it player. Double click on it. If you have Visual Studio, it'll open in Visual Studio, otherwise it'll open up in Mono Develop. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we are going to make a public float called move speed and we'll make the default 10 you can change this anytime you like and obviously that will be to control how fast the player moves next what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a reference to the rigid body that's attached to the player rigid body 2d there it is and we're just gonna call it player so now we're going to link up the reference that we have in the variable, and we're going to do this by doing player that equals this dot get component. Whoa, can't spell. Rigid body should show up. Rigid body 2D. So what this will do is whatever game object the script is attached to, if it has a rigid body 2D, it'll get that in reference to it. So next we're going to go to update and we're going to change this to fixed update because we're going to use physics to move and fixed update works better with physics. And in here we're going to type in move player. That's a function that we haven't made yet. We're going to make it right now. So next we do public void move player. And in here it's going to be very simple. It's just one line of code player or the rigid body that we made a link to I'm sorry player dot velocity equals new vector 2 and in here we're going to type in input that get axis horizontal and then next we're going to put input that get axis vertical whoa got the quotation here and we're gonna close that up and then we're gonna multiply it by the move speed so what we're saying is that whenever the player inputs something that's supposed to be a horizontal key that you could set inside unity I, I think by default it's left and right arrow key and the same logic for vertical which is up and down arrow key you know whenever you put those inputs in it's gonna move accordingly with the speed that we set over here Alright, so now we're going to go back to Unity. We're going to select the spaceship. We're going to add the script that we just made. So go to Add Component, Scripts, find your script. 
And now we're going to add a few other things. We're going to go to Physics 2D. We're going to add a Physics, um, I'm sorry, Box Collider 2D. Go back to Physics 2D, add Rigid Body 2D. And in here, we're just going to change one value. We're going to change Gravity Scale from 1 to 0. I'll show you why. If you do it by default, it will just drop. We don't want that. Set it to 0. And it does not drop. It stays in place. Okay, so now you should actually be able to move your player around by using the arrow keys. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working. I think what I forgot to do is I forgot to save this file. So go back here in case you didn't save it. Come back here and it should update. Yep, there it is. Now you should press, be able to press play. As you can see, it makes a reference to itself and you should be able to move around. There you go. All eight directions. Okay, so now that we have movement going, I'm going to show you why we're using physics. So, to test it out and show you, we're going to add a game uh, game object cube. Uh, we'll leave it as cube. We're going to move this out a little bit over, over here. Change the Y size to 10. Remove the box collider because this is for 3D. We're using 2D. Go to physics 2D, add box collider. Right? So let's run it. Let's see what happens. You see how you stop when you hit that? A very common... Thing that's going to show up on Google when you type in how to move an object they're going to show you this line this is using transform translation you don't want to do that so we're going to save this and we're going to try to do the same test again and look at what happens Woo! We go right through it you could make a whole bunch of complicated code to restrict the movement or you could just use physics for movement okay so now we're going to move on to getting the player to shoot First thing we're going to do, we're going to go to Game Object on the top, 3D Object, and we're going to pick Capsule. So let's drag this thing out a little bit to the side so it's out of the way. Right click on the screen to be able to drag it. Now click on Capsule, look under Inspector, and remove Capsule Collider. Now we're going to go to Add Component, Physics 2D, and we are going to pick Polygon Collider 2D. So next we go over here, you see this Edit Controller right here gonna click on that and as you can see we can drag these points around to make it a desirable shape and if you just click anywhere you can add a new point like so and we're just gonna try to wrap it around as best as possible that's good I like that so we're done with the capsule now we're gonna go to prefab folder right click create prefab and we're gonna call this um, player projectile and then all you have to do is go from the hierarchy left click drag it and drop it inside the player projectile prefab oh there is one thing that I forgot to do um, we forgot to shrink this size so go to the scale transform scale put 0.25 and 0.25 whoa that's 25 0.25 here so if you were to match this up now, it looks just about right for projectile size. Alright, so now we have the object that we're going to use as a projectile for our player. We're going to go to script and we're going to make something that allows it to be generated. So we create a new C-sharp script. We're simply going to call this shoot, create it, double click on it. And next, we're going to make a few variables. So underneath the public class, shoot, and before void start, let's add these variables. So first things first, we're going to have public transform. Oops. And we'll call it projectile spawn. Right? Next, we're going to have public float. Next, fire. Uh, let's make it equal to... 1.0 or in this case one second so I'll explain this in a second next is public float current time equals 0 0.0 F so next fire is going to be the time interval between each shot while current time is going to be the current time and we're going to add time or seconds milliseconds to it so that it builds up to 1.0 so once it hits 1.0 we're going to do a comparison check to see if we can shoot something so next things, we're going to go to void start and we're going to link up the reference that we made for projectile spawn transform. 
So we do that by doing projectile spawn equals this that game object that transform. So whatever game object this is attached to, it's going to find it and get the transform of it. So next under shoot, we're simply just going to make a function shoot. And I'm sorry, uh, function call. And then we're going to make the actual function underneath void update. Public void shoot with a capital S. Is this reserved? Why is it? Let's do lowercase s. It looks like it's reserved. It shouldn't be coming up as blue like that. Okay, so first things first, we're going to get the current time. And we're going to add time into it and we do that by doing current time equals plus equals time dot delta time next we're going to get input for the button and we're going to do get button fire i think it's with a capital f fire one and if the time between each shot is um up like if it's from zero seconds to one second now, which is next fire, the time interval, we can do something such as shoot. Okay. So in here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say the time interval Oops. It's plus equal to current time. I'll explain this in a second. Next, we're going to actually create the object, or instantiate it rather, and put it on the map or the screen. Projectile. I'm sorry, it's projectile, projectile spawn dot position, and quaternion dot identity. And this is to shoot or create the object the object. So I'm going to explain that in a second too. Next we do next fire minus equals current time and then we reset current time by saying current time equals 0, 0.0 f. So what's going on here? So in terms of the time stuff we're seeing current time is at zero and it builds upon it right? So when it hits when it's larger than next fire that means that we can fire which is one second. So we're going to add current time to it so that we can no longer shoot again because it's out of scope, right? And then we, inst this instantiate line is going to create it. I'll go into more detail on, on instantiate in a second. I just want to finish explaining the time. So after it's been made, we're going to subtract the current time again so that it's a valid, it can be valid to be within time interval so you can shoot again and we'll make the current time start over. So it takes a whole second again. Okay, so now for instantiate projectile, what we're doing here is first and foremost, we're gonna look at this over here for documentation. They take three parameters. First is the original object, which will be the projectile, player projectile that we made, that capsule. Next is the transform, where the location is gonna come from. We'll cover that in a little bit, in more depth. And the next is the rotation. And we did quaternion identity. What quaternion identity means is basically right here. This up, no rotation. This object's perfectly aligned with the world or parent axes. So that's it for the script. Next part is attaching it to the object. Okay. So, oh, um, this is red because we forgot to make a projectile game object. So we'll just go over here, public game object, projectile. So this is going to be a variable that's going to, or be a placeholder for the actual prefab that we just made. So now everything looks good. Let's save it. Go to Unity. And now we're going to do something interesting here. We're going to do create empty game object. And we're just going to go over the position. We're going to set everything to zero, right? So now it's exactly where the player is. Then we are going to drag it and drop it under the spaceship with a player. And then we're going to drag it to a desirable position 
as you can see right here right so it's slightly just just slightly above let's make it an even two in terms of y okay and we're gonna attach the script that we just made onto this okay so now projectile spawn is automatically going to be detected to where this game object is right now because we have that set up now we have to drop something for this game object for projectile we're going to go to our prefabs folder we're going to select the player whoop don't select the player project projectile um left click on it hold it and drag and drop it over here and now let's zoom out a bit if you actually play it Yes, you can still move around, but if you left click, you'll see that you make an object appear in front of you. Woo, that's crazy. Okay, so we're at the point where we can move the player and it can create the projectile to shoot. But the projectile, as you can see, doesn't go anywhere. So we're going to give it some functionality. Uh, first things first, we are going to go to prefabs, go to player projectile. We're going to add a rigid body 2D physics your body 2d and just like the player we're going to set the gravity scale to zero now we're going to edit the code i'm sorry did i say edit i meant create the script so we're going to go to create c sharp script and we will just call this uh move projectile god i hope you guys can see this looks really really small I try zooming in on the window. I realize not everyone. Oh, there we go. I should have done this a while ago. I apologize. All right, so we're gonna create some variables here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a rigid body, 2D, and we're gonna use this to reference and link ourself, the object, the actual projectile itself. And the other variable is the move speed of how fast the projectile is gonna move. Let's set the default to 10. And uh, you remember, if this is the reference to a rigid body 2D, and here inside the void start is where we're going to make the actual link. So we're going to say projectile equals this, that game object, that get component rigid body 2D. So again, to refresh your memory, this is saying to whatever uh, this is attached to, get the game object and get the component that's attached to it, which is rigid body 2D. And finally, similar to the way that we did the player movement, we're going to use uh, physics to move it. So all we're going to do, we don't need to make a, a function for this one. We'll just do it right under the update itself. So projectile.velocity equal new vector 2. And the first one, as you can see here, they say float X and Y. We don't want any X movement, we just want Y. And we're going to multiply it by the move speed. And there we go, we're done. So the only thing we have to do now is go back here, uh, go back to prefabs folder, go to your prefab, and find the script that we just made, move for that tile. And let's test it and run it. So now, oh, you saw that first one shoot out? See, now it actually shoots out. And again, uh, with the public stuff, it doesn't have to be public. You can make it private, but if you make it public, you can. it's a little bit easier to test around, such as we're making the move speed, uh, make it 50 so we see a big difference. You see how much faster it goes now? So that's one thing we can do. You can make it private, though. It doesn't have to be public again. All right. So moving forward, before we make the enemy and enemy logic, we are going to set some restrictions for the player. So remember that wall that we made over here to test the player restrictions and difference between uh, moving with physics and moving with transform.translate? Well, we're going to implement it into the game. First thing we're going to do is we're going to call this right wall. Let's zoom out. And we are going to give it some new dimensions here. We're going to set this to 16. And uh, let's see what else. We are going to set this to 40. Where'd that wall go? Okay, so we're zoomed out pretty far. So we're going to... You could 
optionally do it all over again, 3D cube and remove all the uh, 3D collision stuff. Or you could just copy, paste it. Personally, I think this is a lot faster. And we'll just rename this to left ball. Give it the opposite direction of X. So right wall was 16, left wall is negative 16. Copy paste again. This one we will rename this to bottom and we'll change this back to one. We'll change this to what is it? 32. Oops. And we'll change this to negative 10.5. And the position has to be zero. Yeah, that's not right. That's more like it. Where's the player? Huh, that's interesting. <clears throat> you know what? Actually no. Leave it at leave it at this. Negative ten point five. And these walls will be ten. And these will be ten. Right? So copy paste this. Rename this to top and give it 30.5. Okay, so just in case that was too fast, the top wall will have, or top border or boundary will have these dimensions. And the bottom will have these dimensions. Okay. The right wall will have these dimensions. And the left wall will have these dimensions. So you can take it, jot it down, or go back in the video and pause it as needed. So as you notice, we have these walls, but the camera is still stuck right where it is, right? So our scene has these boundaries. And as you can see on the scene view, it is working as intended, but the camera is stationed right where it is. So we're going to go over here. And we're going to make some modifications to where the camera is located. Okay. So first things first, we're going to change the camera to 10 for the position. Next, we're actually going to go into the camera settings and we are going to set this to 20. And now it should be adjusted. So you see how it looks on the right or left screen? The boundaries are working just as they should be. You don't see the walls. Whoop, that's the capsule. You don't see the walls. You see it's working. And by the way, this uh, the whole thing, we're hitting the capsule and it going haywire like this. That's because of the physics in the box collider, right? There is a way to fix this. We're going to fix it by using layers, but that's going to be later in the video. Okay, so... Now that we have boundaries and restrictions, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to that website where we got the original image, and we're going to download a different color ship. In this case, I already did it, so I'm going to move right on ahead. Or, you know, again, alternatively, you could use your own game art. So once you download your game art, or whatever game image you're going to use, go to where it is, and select the image folder, drag it in there okay and then we're gonna rename this that's ah, kind of a pain you gotta double click it right on the text and we're gonna call it enemy okay so the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna drag the enemy into the scene we're just gonna make sure this is all zero we're gonna go to rotation for X we're gonna flip it around to 180 right and then just use the controls to drag it across any way you like, like so. Then we're going to go to prefabs. We're going to go create a new prefab. We're just going to call the prefab enemy. And we're simply going to, where's this guy? Drag and drop just like we did for the capsule or player projectile. Okay, at this point we have the prefab ready to go, so now we've got to give it some functionality. So we're going to go to script folder, we're going to do create. We're going to create a C-sharp script, we're just going to call this enemy. Let's keep it damn simple. 
double click on it so we could edit inside of it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go inside and create some variables. Let me move the mic a little bit closer. Okay, so the first variable is rigid body, which is going to be a reference to itself. And we're just going to call it enemy reference to itself. I feel like I don't need to add um, these comments. The project files will actually be well commented, I promise. So the next is going to be public float move speed. We've seen this several times already. Right? So it's pretty obvious what that does. Uh, project, uh, not the projectile. It's the movement speed of the enemy. Finally, we have a new guy in town. Boolean change direction. And by default, it will be no. We do not want to change direction. So next, inside void start, as we always do, when we want to make a reference to ourselves, we'd say this dot game object dot get component rigid body 2D. Why do I always have to go up top for that? There you go. That's done. So inside void update right here, we're going to type move enemy. Don't worry, we didn't make the functions yet, but we will. And down here, we will create the move enemy function. <sighs> okay. So, this is going to be very simple. Very, very simple. In here, we're just going to have a condition. We're going to check to see if direction is equal to true. If change direction is equal to true, we want to do something. Else if if change direction is not true, do something else. So when it is true, we want it to go a certain direction. And we're going to do that by moving its rigid body. Yes, we didn't add it yet, but we will right after we finish the script. So we just like the way that we move the player, we're going to move the enemy. So we're going to do it by physics, and we're going to say vector 2. 1, 0, so x only move in the x plane, times negative 1, so it goes the opposite direction of right, because by default, doing just this new vector 2, 1, 0 will mean that it goes towards right. Negative 1 means it goes left, times the move speed, right? And if it's false, well, let's just copy and paste this. Can you guess what happens here? If it's false, we want it to just go the intended direction of going right. So how are we going to determine when this boolean triggers from true to false and vice versa? Well, we're going to do it by, remember those boundaries we just finished making? We're going to use collision detection. So here we're going to type on collision, whoa, capital C, collision, enter 2D, collision, 2D call it doesn't really matter what you call this it's just a uh, this part really doesn't matter the only thing that matters is this 2D and this 2D right this you can name it anything it's just the uh, parameter of what's being sent what it's going to compare against so we're going to have another condition and if the game object that it hits is equal to right wall do something right and if the game object that we hit has a name of left wall do something again so when it hits the right wall I don't think we've used any debug logs but let's use it so if you want to print the message out to yourself like you want to test some things um, this is how you can do it debug.log and we're going to say hit the right wall so we know which wall we hit. And let's copy and paste this down here and change it from right wall to left wall. I'm sorry guys, I forgot to zoom in. So let me go from the top. I'm just going to do a quick scan down from the top. Okay, I'm going to zoom in one more notch. So this is everything that we typed up until this point. You can feel free to pause the screen or you can just go to the GitHub link that's there 
and get the code files directly to reference it from there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here, we are telling ourselves we hit a wall, right? So now we hit one of the walls, let's change the direction. We'll get the boolean and set it to true so that we change directions while we've got. So we change directions we go another way. When we hit the other wall, we want to change directions again. So it's as simple as that. That's all you need, right? I'm going to zoom out. Again, you can look at the GitHub link for more. Uh, so you don't have to pause this. So now that we're finished with the script, we're going to go back to Unity. We're going to go to Prefabs folder. We're going to find the enemy. We're going to add a few components. First and foremost, we're going to add the enemy script that we just made. And next, we're going to add uh, Box Collider 2D. And if we go to Physics 2D, and we're going to add a Rigid Body 2D. And in here, we're going to make some changes. We're going to change the gravity scale from 1 to 0. And for constraints, you see this little arrow to drop it down. We're going to constrain the Y and the Z. Okay, so let's run this thing. Okay, so as you can see, we can. Ooh, we really gotta add those layers in to fix that. You see, it does hit. It does hit with it. It does slow it down using physics. Also, I want to get rid of one thing that's on the screen. You see this capsule over here that we made early on. We're just gonna delete it off the screen so it's not in the way anymore. So let's zoom out a little bit. This seems to be good. Okay, so we established we have the enemy moving, so now we have to make the projectile. Similar to the way that we made the projectile for the player, we're just going to go game object, 3D object, capsule, right? We're going to use similar dimensions, 0.25 for the scale for X, 0.25 for the scale for Y, okay? And next, we're going to go to prefabs. I'm going to go to create, new prefab. We're just going to call this enemy projectile right <clears throat> then we're going to drive this sucker in we can delete this one this original one okay so now we go to scripts create enemy projectile is what we're going to call it double click on it to open it up as you notice I'm going to go a little bit fast because we kind of already did this stuff it's almost like copy and paste and code at this point so we're going to make a few variables, right? Public rigid body. I don't know how many times we must. Whoa. Rigid body 2D. I don't know how many times you must have done this, but, you know, self-explanatory for what these things are. Move speed. This projectile needs a link to its reference. And we'll do that in the start. This dot game object. Dot get component. Rigid body. 2D. <clears throat> and uh, for the update, we'll simply just have it move on its own using physics, just like the projectile for the player. Only this time, we're going to have projectile that velocity equal new vector 2. Still zero for the X because it's not moving the X. Minus one so it shoots towards the player or down multiplied by the movement speed. Okay, so now all we have to do is go back here, go to the prefabs folder, find the enemy projectile, add the script to it, enemy projectile. Now let's drag a copy of it and let's press play. Oh, it's breaking because why is it breaking? What did we forget to do? Oh, we don't have a rigid body. It says it right there. No rigid body. So here we're going to go and add a rigid body to it. I actually forgot another important part. So first we have to Move the capsule collider. We're gonna go add the rigid body. Make the gravity scale zero. And then we're gonna add physics, polygon collider. And we're gonna design 
What the hell? Let's delete this one. It's outdated. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so we're going to go here. Right? <coughs> we're going to adjust this at a new point here. Drag this one closer. Drag this one closer. Drag that one closer. Just a tad bit closer. Okay, so now it should run. <sighs> Why isn't it going? We forgot to set the projectile speed. Okay, so for the move speed, we'll make the default 15.0 uh, F. So it'll be a little bit faster than the players, just to make it a little bit difficult, right? Still not moving. And that is because this didn't update. It should have updated. That's the beauty of doing a public, right? So you see that? You see how it moves on the left screen here? Let me zoom out here one more time. It does shoot out. So there we have it. There's the enemy projectile. Now we just need to make the actual shoot script. So before we make the enemy shoot script, let's just make sure that the changes we made to this projectile is inside the prefab. So we just drag it from the hierarchy and put it in there like that. We can delete that copy now. So now we're going to go back to scripts. We're going to go to create C sharp script. We're going to call it enemy shoot. Double click on it to open it up. Go back, whoop, go back to mono develop. And we're just going to make a few quick variables here. So first and foremost, public game object. I don't know why it doesn't do that. Okay. Public game object projectile. Um, public transform. So if you look closely, or if you notice, this is very similar to the way that we made the player shoot. They're just, there's just going to be a few tweaks. Public float next fire equals 1.0f. Public float current time equals 0.0f. Right? Under void start, we're just gonna link up the projectile spawn location, and it's gonna be this dot game object dot transform. Under void update, we're gonna make this in a second. This function doesn't exist yet, but it will now. Public void enemy shoot. And in here, this is exactly copy paste of what we had for the player shoot script. The only difference is that instead of a button trigger being an additional condition that needs to be met, we're just going to do the logic about the time constraints. <coughs> so same logic, next fire plus equals current time instantiate projectile projectile spawn and quaternion identity and finally next fire minus equals current time current time equals 0.0f so we're just going to reset it okay so now we go back here we go to the enemy we're going to create empty game object. We're going to reset all of this stuff just to zero. I mean, you don't have to do it this way. I just do it to be sure that everything is good. Oh, whoops. If you saw purpose. So grab the game object, drop it inside the enemy. Now click on the game object. Whoop, and drag it up to a desirable location. Slightly in front of... The enemy. I'm just going to type in 2.5. So it's going to be 2.5 in front. Right? Select the game object, attach the script that we just made for enemy shoot. Something's not right. Uh, what's going on here? 
What's wrong with this? Script of current fire. Next fire. I don't see anything wrong with this. Ah, uh, Quaternion identity. Time dot dot the time of current time. Next fire. Next fire plus equals current time. Next fire minus equals. That's fine. Void. Enemy shoot. I don't see anything wrong with this. Why is it saying argument number three cannot convert Unity Engine dot Quaternion expression type to bool? What are they talking about? Oh my God! After looking at this for a while, I realized the thing I missed was projectile spawn dot position. This is why you're probably better. Uh, you know what? Actually, don't copy and paste. You're probably better off typing it. I should have copied and pasted for the purpose of this video, though. So now it should be able to shoot. Right. Ah, we forgot to assign the object. So we go back to preference folder. Click, hold on to it, drag it into the projectile spot right there. And it should be able to shoot now. Look at that. And it's shooting. Let's go to the move speed for enemy projectile. Let's make it. Yeah, that's fair. 15 is good. So it's a little bit faster than you, and it shoots a little bit faster as well. Okay, so now that we got the enemy moving and shooting, we need hit detection, right? So let's move towards that. So first, we're going to begin by modifying the player projectile. So we're going to go to scripts, we're going to go to move projectile. I should have called this player projectile. Too late to change it now. We're in too deep with this tutorial. So we're going to go over here, right? Everything's good and fine, but now let's add some add some hit detection. And we're going to do that the same way we used the uh, collision detection for the AI or the enemy AI in terms of detecting whether or not it's hitting a wall. So we're going to type in void on collision enter 2D. Um, if call that game object dot name equals enemy. Right? Then we do something. What are we going to do? I oh, man, I hate this setup. I like like this better. We're going to say call that game object dot set active false so we're just going to turn off the game object it's simple it's unintrusive right so let's go back and let's see if it happens when we actually get hit by the oh come on get hit there you go see it disappears maybe i should maximize this so you can see it all right look at this it hits it it disappears so now it's time for the enemy projectile to have hit detection pretty similar to the player projectile so we're going to start the same way we're going to go to enemy projectile where is it let's go edit enemy projectile right do the same thing hit detection and we're going to do void on collision enter 2D collision well collision collision 2D call and if call that game object that tag this is the only thing that changes this is another thing that I should have done earlier so I'll explain that in a second Um, if called that game object dot tag equals player, so you could give game objects 
tags. So if you have a whole bunch of enemies, you could give them all a tag of enemy, or a whole bunch of walls that have the same logic, you could give them a tag, you know, wall. So they share the similar, you could use that to use the same code, same logic. Uh, that being said, everything else is going to look identical to the enemy, uh, player projectile. So call that game object set active false. So we're just going to simply turn off or disable the player game object. So let's go back here. I want to zoom out here too so you can see it on both screens. So if we were to if we were to get hit by one of these Ah, you know why that didn't work? Because we didn't add a tag to this player object yet, so I'm actually glad that happened. You see you go to spaceship. This is another thing I should have done. I should have called this player instead of spaceship. Anyways, you see how it's untagged? You could click right here, it's untagged. Get player tag. So now when the enemy projectile actually hits us, it should erase us from existence. And it does. So we got hit detection working. So next we're going to move on to layers. So now we're going to address that issue that you guys have been seeing throughout the tutorial in that when the player hits its own projectile, it will end up, you know, colliding with the player and changing its physics or motion or whatever. And the same logic applies to the enemy's projectile and itself. So uh, the way we could, you could do it a couple ways. You could do it programmatically and uh, ignore each other when they hit each other but it's much easier to just use layers you see this guy right here yeah these are all these layers that you can use um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to edit we're gonna go to project settings tags and layers and we're gonna add four new layers the first one's gonna be player the next one is gonna be enemy the next one's gonna be player projectile and the last one is gonna be enemy projectile so we're gonna put these things in different layers so that they do not collide with each other. So we're going to go to Physics 2D and you see this nice little chart down here? Right here. I wish I could select or make a box. But you see Player and Player Projectile. They're not going to collide with each other anymore. An Enemy Projectile and Enemy they will no longer collide with each other. So let's test it out. So what we can do is we could get a player projectile and we can go over here and we can play it. Ooh. That's actually supposed to happen. I'm actually glad that happened because I did skip a step. I kept, as you can see, the player projectile is still in default layer and the spaceship is still in default layer. So now you know what's going to happen if we don't have the layers. Right, this is what's happening currently before we implement the layers. You saw that it also happened to the enemy ship as well. It, it didn't move it because we froze its X and Y, uh, I'm sorry, Y position, but otherwise it probably would have moved up. So what we're going to do is we're going to get enemy projectile. We already have it selected, right? Actually, let's do it in the prefab. We're going to enemy projectile, and we're going to put it in the enemy projectile layer. We're going to the player projectile and we're going to put it in the player projectile layer. We're going to get the enemy and we're going to put the enemy in the enemy layer. We're going to get the player and we're going to put it in the player layer. Yes, change all children if you get prompted like that. So now you can see the player projectile go right through it. And same for this. Let's maximize it on this screen. You see how each other's shots go right through each other but if I were to shoot the enemy if I could if I could manage to hit him he still disappears and you could assume the same logic applies for if we get hit by his projectile as you can see see so they're not intruding on each other or on themselves rather okay hang in there guys we're almost there there's only one thing left for us to do at this level Obviously, there's a lot more things we could add to the game, such as scoreboards, upgrades, all that stuff, different kind of weapons, multiple enemies, all that jazz. But the whole point is this to be a very simple shooter game and a nice introduction to doing Unity 2D development. Um, so if you notice when you play it, there's one more thing that's left. The projectiles, they linger at the bottom. They just start piling up, right? So there's normally there's a few ways to take care of this. There's, the first way is 
the most common way I think is uh, they usually have a timer so that the projectile will go on and exist for X amount of time, for example, five seconds, and then it will destroy itself or disappear, whatever. Um, we could do it that way too, but the game is so small that it'll probably just be easier to modify the script for the enemy and player projectile. So we're going to open up the enemy projectile, and the way that we're going to modify it is so that when the enemy projectile hits the bottom wall, it's going to disappear. And when the player projectile hits the top wall, it's going to disappear. The reason being that the enemy projectiles, in this game at least, it'll never be hitting the top. It can only hit the bottom. And it can't, neither of their shots or projectiles can hit the side. So we only need to worry about a one way traffic. Okay, so we have this enemy projectile script opened up, right? All we have to do, as we discussed, is make it detect when it's hitting the bottom of. The stage. So all we can do is, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother typing this. It's gonna be the same logic, almost. So instead of tag here, it's gonna be name, and this is gonna be bottom, because of stuff we discussed earlier. And we're gonna change this to destroy object, this that game object. Okay, copy and. Go to move projectile, paste this from bottom, change it to top. So now when we run the game, as you can see the projectiles when they hit either the bottom, when the enemy projectile hits the bottom it disappears, right? And when the player projectile hits the top, it disappears. So really the last thing you can do here. Um, in terms of this, is go to build and run, right? So there you have it. You can play it, and you're good to go. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for this tutorial. Obviously, there are plenty of things we could add to the game to make it more complex and more fun, such as scores, scoreboards, multiple enemies, spawns health bars, weapon upgrades, bosses, etc. You get the idea. There's plenty to branch out and grow from here, but um, as I make those videos in the future, I'm going to refer to this bare bones project to start with. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed yourself as you're making it, because I know I sure did enjoy while I was filming this. And uh, please subscribe for more content in the future and just to give me some general support. Alright, thanks a lot. Take care, everyone.